Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the know with Juanita. We're happy to greet you again this week. We're glad that you're tuning in on our show because we're always happy for people that are interested in the issues that are happening in our cities. If you haven't watched us before, each week we'll have somebody from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area, probably a mayor or a city council person, telling us about what are the current issues that that city is facing or what may be some of the things that are getting planned for the future. And we ask you, if it's your city, be sure to take down their name and their email and phone number so that if some of the issues that we talk about resonate and you care about, that you can be in contact with them. Then I'm very happy tonight to welcome Steve Schmidtkall, who's on the Golden Valley City Council, who's been on our show before. Mm -hmm. So we're glad to welcome you back. Thank you, Juanita. I always enjoy our conversations, and uh, every now and then you'll stump me up on something <laughs> that I should know about, but do not. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I've been on the City Council now for, this will be my seventh uh -huh. year. As you recall, I was uh, appointed right. for the second year of Mike Freiberg's term. Uh, and before that, I was nine years on the Golden Valley Planning Commission, so that was good, good preparation. Oh, right, a lot of experience so, with what's happening in yes, the cities. Yes, yep. And maybe you could share a little bit about your time in Golden Valley for the people out there that don't know you. People from Golden Valley probably have a pretty good idea, but there's go yeah. to all nine cities. So well, I, I always think about my oldest daughter because she uh -huh. was born shortly after we moved uh -huh. into Golden Valley, and she's 34 now. So uh -huh. uh, that's how long. We've lived in Golden Valley. Uh, during my er early years in Golden Valley, I was more active in the school oh, in District sure. 281 because right. our, our kids were going through that program. Uh, but then when they went off to college, um, I saw an opportunity to uh -huh. get on the Planning Commission and uh, uh, serve there, as I said, for nine years and then was appointed to the City Council. So. Now, we're always encouraging people out there to get involved, so it's good for them to hear about how other people got involved to the point of running for office, right? Yeah, and I'll tell you, we just appointed two young people uh -huh. to commissions last night. Uh -huh. uh, we're always, it seems like there's a certain amount of turnover in our commissions, right. and we're always looking for new members, and for these young people especially, uh, we've interviewed four high school uh -huh. students in the last, I'm going to say month, uh -huh. and these are outstanding students, ah. really uh, high achievers, right. and they're going to serve on these commissions. All of our cities have annual programs about how they're going to keep up their city streets. Maybe you can yeah. tell us a little bit about how Golden Valley does it. Well, I, my hat is off to the earlier uh, city councils mm -hmm. of Golden Valley. This pavement management program that Golden Valley has been executing it was supposed to run for 20 years. Uh -huh. We're in about year 25, uh -huh. I'll say. And the reason for that is that the cost, when they started the program, you could build a mile of roads for like $500,000. Right. Now it's something more like two and a half yeah. million dollars. So in order to manage the budget, we have generally, depending on price fluctuations, we've generally, generally reduced the amount of mileage that gets rebuilt uh -huh. each year. But when we finish the program, which is I think we're one or two years away, right. then all of Golden Valley streets uh -huh. will be relatively new uh -huh. and they uh, have been engineered to a higher, much higher uh -huh. standard than they were before. So they'll last So we longer. can expect them to last for uh, a number of years right. before we have to start the process over again. And that, you know, involves routine maintenance oh, right, and right. Uh, um, seal coating and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So um, it's been a it's been a significant portion of the of the city budget to serv right. uh, servicing the uh, the bonding that was issued for this. Now this year we were able to add a million and a half dollars to the ah. uh, from our uh, from the the golf course fund and, uh -huh. and other uh, uh, other funds like that, in order to reduce the the levy that homeowners right. are right. required to pay. Because now area. Golden Valley pays some part of it, and the homeowner pays another part. Yes. Yep. And uh, and these enterprise funds have uh, allowed us to, uh -huh. which is the uh, Brookview Community oh, Center, right. uh, 
uh, has been so successful that we were able to ah. to uh, fund uh, part of the street project this year. So we had it allowed us to issue fewer bonds, and, right? Uh, uh, so that we'll have a less of a debt load to service over those and roads. And now you're at the point where you have less that need to be constructed down to the bare bones and built back up. From well, that's what you true. Said? Yeah. Um, uh, once in a while, there's our, our sections that really yeah. need to, uh, where the infrastructure below right. the sewer piping needs to be replaced, and that that adds greatly to the cost, oh, right. of it, as you can imagine. Yeah, because otherwise they do something called mill and overlay, and I thought maybe you could explain that was so when people run across it in the post or something, they'll understand what they're talking about. Yeah, that's a lower cost. That's kind of a maintenance right. thing that you do right. every uh, five or ten mm -hmm. years, I guess. Uh, they they mill the the old roadway uh -huh. surface off down I'm going to say about an inch okay. inch and a half and then they apply new new asphalt over the top and then it lasts for a while yep. again and it right. lasts for a good long while before you have to do that right. again yep. now which area which areas or streets in Golden Valley are under maintenance this summer uh, there's a map in here and also this is available on the on the city website oh okay um, Medley Lane and 23rd, over by Medley Park, basically, okay. e east of Medley Park for about three blocks, uh -huh. and then three blocks south of County Road 70, uh, which would be Medicine Lake Road. Now, so, as the project moves along, all of those people got notice of that maybe oh, last well, fall? Or oh, well in advance. Yeah, yeah a they, long time they, in advance. We have an open house the, the, the year before, so yeah. we can learn about it, and then, of course, uh, there's an assessment that that they right, have to pay right. so but but they they get a lot of notice about it and then the other yeah. part is uh, keeping people informed as the project's going along it's a kind of project everybody's happy with when it's done right well, yeah everybody <laughs> likes new streets right. but nobody likes right. to pay assessments uh, <laughs> or put lucky up with for the me uh, right. our street was done very early in the program so the you know the assessments right. uh, go up as the costs go up. And then uh, something that I know Golden Valley has been talking about is Highway 55 has various problems they're concerned about and you're kind of just looking oh, uh, to the future on that? I, I always refer to Highway 55 as a river of molten lava that <laughs> runs through our city. It's so difficult to get across oh, there right. even you know in a car or a bicycle or even walking mm -hmm. and um, we're looking at ways to improve access across 55. Uh -huh. I mean, we've we've got some great crossings over uh -huh. 100. Oh, right. Uh, uh, Duluth Street and uh, uh, that where the bicycle trail uh -huh. goes under Lilac Drive. Right. There. But uh, Highway 55 is much more difficult. Mm -hmm. We're looking at uh, building a pedestrian tunnel that uh -huh. would connect Perpich School with the other oh, side oh, of the yeah. uh, of Highway 55. Right. And uh, I've been pushing for adding a roadway underneath the railroad bridge just ah. east of Perpich. Uh -huh. And I, you know, I don't know uh, what the practicalities yeah. of that would be, but uh, in my vision, there's a frontage road that slopes down and comes underneath, similar to yeah. that crossing under right. Highway 100. Right. Um, and I, we're working on ways to increase a crossing at Winnetka. Uh -huh. uh, we've had uh, a design that consists of a elevated uh, walkway that uh -huh. rings oh. the intersection and you can come up to it from oh, all the from approaching. Oh, from all four sides. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that so, sounds interesting. Yeah, I think something like that would, yeah. uh, would be nice. But if you've ever tried to ride a bike across that bridge oh, that's there yeah. now, it's, a, it's pretty dicey because yeah. it's uh, kind of a switchback. Yeah, I think so, so right. So that that's in the talking stage, right? Well, yeah, we uh, I think that that tunnel is actually uh, something that's, oh, that's coming, coming down the pike. Ah. But, uh, I don't think we'll see it for a year or two. Now, Brookview Park, which also has the new facility, but the park itself is celebrating 50 years. It's been around since 1969. Can you tell us a little bit about the early years in the park? Well, uh, I was astonished to learn in uh, Marshall Tannick does a very nice presentation about the history of ah. Brookview. Uh, it was actually founded as a Jewish um, golf club ah. uh, because uh, at the time 
Jews were having difficulty joining right. uh, the other existing golf right. clubs in the Minneapolis area. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they moved to Golden oh. Valley and started their own, I f uh, forget what the name of the club was at that time, but um, eventually it, it uh, came to Golden Valley. Right. And uh, the, the building that we replaced was starting to become very, uh, I guess, shabby. Oh, and there were could... some unsafe, con well, I don't want to say unsafe, that's strong, but uh, it wasn't quite compliant with right. codes and access. And they had been there. Uh, parts of it were 100 years yeah, old. Yeah, I was going to say a long, so, yeah. long, long yep. time. And I couldn't be prouder of the building we built ah. to replace it. it. It turned out to be very nice. That is a lovely facility. And um, the Brookfield Park is set up now for more things than just golf. So maybe you can oh, mention well, some I'll of the activities. There's uh, lots of activities. I believe we have only the second lawn bowling facility uh -huh. next to Brits in downtown uh, Minneapolis. And if you go by there, you'll see that it's busy, busy, right. busy. And I felt so bad when we had to move it because... Oh, during the construction. Yeah, the, uh, we built it before the construction mm -hmm. and... I guess at that time we didn't know exactly yeah. where the new building was going to be, but the lawn bowling was really taking off. It was really getting yeah. popular, and then you know we had to take one. Right. Or, I don't know if it was one or two seasons out to move right. the the lawn bowling court. But I'm very pleased that we mm. built it back because it's heavily used and very much enjoyed by people. And then I think don't you have a lot of cross country trails and hiking trails that emanate from there? Well. Um, there's especially things in the winter. Yeah, uh, that's what I was thinking there's, of. There's uh, fat tire, you can rent fat tire uh -huh. bikes and ride courses on uh, Brookview. Uh, you can rent golf bikes ah. and uh, you can play golf using a bicycle. Oh, I didn't, the I've so hadn't heard of that a, before. They have a thing on the back yeah, for putting carrying. your golf bag and uh, I, I see them out there once in ah, a while. I'll so. have to look for that. Yeah, that's very interesting. If you see a bike on the golf course. It'll be you. <laughs> All right, that'd be the easier way. Uh, maybe you can tell us what are people may have driven by your building, but when they b drive by, do you call it your community center? Well, we or had what, a... Or do you just call it Brookview? We actually had a, a study group come up with a name. Oh. And uh, the original name was going to be Brookview Commons. Okay. But I think there were people that thought that name was too common. Oh. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> We came up with Brookview Community Center, and okay. as you know, the restaurant in there is 316, which is the right. address of the right. building. And um, uh, and you might have noticed new new signage all around the right. uh, around the park. Uh, it was all it was rebranded re and mm -hmm. updated, and there's kind of a logo, and right. uh, it's all very fresh and nice, I think. Because oh, there's meeting rooms in there. There's meeting rooms of uh, a variety of sizes, uh -huh. uh, from small rooms where maybe six people might meet up to rooms where you can have 100 or 200 mm -hmm. people for an event. Um, I would encourage you to stop in and look at the, uh, the meeting tables in uh -huh. several of the smaller rooms are, are made from slabs cut from the trees that were destroyed during that uh, oh terrible storm yeah. that came through Brookview oh, a few years back. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, right. so the, put them to use. Yeah, the trees were yeah. recycled as uh, beautiful yeah. uh, conference tables. And then, then you have that whole play area for children. Ah, that is, uh, that, that's a, a much loved feature. Mm -hmm. uh, they work hard to keep it uh, safe and sanitary. Um, I took my own grandson there sure. when he was visiting. He just had the time ah. of his life. They have got like a little uh, toddlers uh, area, right. if you will, so the so they can play without getting trampled right. by the bigger <laughs> kids. Very heavily used in uh -huh. the winter. A very nice uh, asset for the community. And as I mentioned earlier, that was not originally part right. of the plan for right. the building. It was uh, added after uh, some residents mm -hmm. suggested that that be a nice thing to have. And it's it's wonderful because it can be used year round. Uh, it uh, doesn't involve water. That's right. always an extra <laughs> expense. And, right, yeah, right. So, um, and then the restaurant serves regular restaurant hours, right? Plus yeah. they can do things for small groups. Or there are, there's uh, caterers that... There are, I believe there are four caterers uh -huh. that have been designated 
So if you have an event in right. Brookview Community Center, you have to use one of those mm -hmm. four caterers. Now, uh, Golden Valley has been dealing with with um, haulers or garbage carriers, and you made some recent decisions because you decided, uh, I think back in April, right? To well, it was almost like deciding not to decide. <laughs> uh, but I've, you know, back when Janine Clancy was the uh -huh. uh, director of public works, I went over to the League of Minnesota Cities, cities with her and Mark Ray, uh, who was in charge of streets at that time. And we went to a, I believe it was a half day presentation about consolidated uh -huh. trash hauling. And it, it involved a number of communities that had done it and they kind right. of shared their story. Uh, one was Shakopee. Uh, I don't remember the others. We had a similar meeting at the Golden Valley City Hall more uh -huh. recently, just a few months ago where we had uh, St. Louis Park, for example, has a full-time staffer okay. that manages uh, trash that, hauling. That and, area. and I know I know for sure certain members of uh, Golden Valley City Council are, well, and me, I believe, like I said, I've always been in favor of consolidated right. hauling, but only if it reduces the cost to the ah, residents. Right, and, right. Um, in my vision, it would not involve yeah. city staff or any added cost right. for the city. Uh, at the time I went to that thing in St. Paul, there was a new state law which gave cities, um, they could uh, give a 60 day notice that they were gonna consolidate uh -huh. their hauling and then haulers of any size could uh, form joint um, joint ventures oh, sure. or alliances, you know, to, right. to manage it. Maybe hauler A does, a third of the city and B does a third uh -huh. and C. It was intended to not drive small haulers uh -huh. uh, out of business. Right. And uh, so what, what Golden Valley decided to do is we didn't go the whole way for consolidation. What we did is limited the number of uh -huh. licensed haulers, right. um, I believe to eight, uh -huh. uh, in the expectation that that would uh, result in fewer trucks driving sure. around the city, which was one of the things we wanted to accomplish for uh, safety right. and uh, you know wear and tear on the streets. Although I always laugh because I just told you how great our streets are. Yeah, right, and right. Uh, so I don't want to sit here and tell you we can't have trucks driving on them because that's not the case at all. Wouldn't fit together. No, no. But it is a, an, a, issue or an area where there's strong differences of opinions on people's well, part. Well, you know, uh, that seems to have softened over the oh, last few good. years. Uh, when uh, Hall, I uh, forget the fellow's name, but uh, for whatever reason, he in, um, inspired tremendous loyalty among ah. his customers. And, and so his customers were most vehemently opposed to, uh -huh. to consolidated right. hauling. Well, he uh, sold his business to, I believe it was Ace Hauling. Uh -huh. And so now uh, it seems now like- Now it's not the same. Some of the wind went out of the right. sales of the opposition, if you right. will. But I think we're taking steps. Sure. Uh, our first step is gonna be to limit haulers. And, and I just think eventually the economic incentive is uh -huh. going to be such that uh, consolidated hauling will be appealing. But, I, you know, how much do, the, do you spend on trash? I spend a few hundred dollars on trash. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, even if it went away, I'd only be saving a few hundred dollars. <laughs> so, it, you know, we're not talking huge savings. Right, right. Uh, I think, but it has to be cheaper for a truck to drive down a street and right. pick up every trash barrel than to have them skipping all right, over you town. Think so, right? yeah, so. And then I'll, I'll put up on the screen because Mark Novinsky is your physical development director. Yes. So if anybody out there has questions about the issue, they could contact him. Absolutely. He would be able he's to the, answer I would all say the he's questions. the most knowledgeable. And I wanted to make sure we had a time to talk about a task force that you have called Rising Tides. Oh, and absolutely. If you want to tell us a little bit about it and you know, that's very exciting. Uh, a number of city employees, senior employees, went through a, a GARE program uh -huh. a couple of years ago, Government Alliance on Race and Equity. Ah. We want Golden Valley to be a leader in equity. Okay. And uh, uh, 
So the city approved an equity plan in okay. January of 2018. And then um, uh, the, the Rising Tides Group came forward or was formed as a task force okay. to deal with uh, 10 areas of uh, equity issues mm -hmm. for the city of Golden Valley. One was uh, ju uh, the ones I can remember off the top of my head, uh, in hiring practices okay. for city employees, contracting practices for city city uh -huh. issued contracts, housing uh, was an issue, and uh, uh, Kirsten Santelisa, she's the head of human resources okay. for the city, has been the, the staff member that's been leading that ah. group. Uh, the original schedule, as I said, was for 10 meetings. Right. And there's every likelihood that there may be a topic or two added, uh -huh. but this is not a commission that's okay. going to, you know, that the, it's going to go on forever. It's right. a task force. They've got these issues that they're going to look sure. at and they're going to report back to the city council. And I very much expect that we'll be making some uh, substantive changes in in city policies oh, right, uh, to, right. to uh, support increased equity and uh, well, opportunities for all. It sounds like a good way to to deal with that because a lot of times you've got words but you don't have anything <laughs> happening. That's right. right. Yeah, and this, and, uh, this group is very, very yeah. diverse. It's uh, people of every every kind of background. And they, the they can spend the time gathering information, talking about issues, and then bring it to the city council. That's right. The city council interviewed uh, all the parties okay. that were interested. I think we pretty much appointed everybody. Ah. <laughs> they were some very motivated right, people. Right. So. But it sounded like an, an interesting way to deal with that issue. Well, um, you know, I'm on the uh, board of directors for the Golden Valley Historical uh -huh. Society. And one of the controversial stories in the in the exhibit, and the Golden Valley has an award-winning uh, historical society oh, yes, exhibit. I would right. encourage I would oh, encourage right. you to go take a look. It's open Thursday afternoons and Saturday afternoons, and uh, there's a story in there about a musician named Oliver Lyle. Uh -huh. I believe he lived in Minneapolis and worked in Golden Valley. He was arrested a number of times uh, by Golden Valley police um, oh. for essentially driving while right. black. Right. Uh, the city was sued and the result of that, the story does have a happy ending. Uh -huh. Golden Valley was one of the first cities in Minnesota to have a human rights commission oh. and we've had one uh, virtually ever oh. since. Very so, good. Uh, and now we've got this uh, rising right. tides group. So uh, uh, Golden Valley is doing great work. Yeah, it look like, sounds and looks like a really good approach to Yep. Moving, moving this whole issue forward a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Right. And we have just a little bit of time left. I thought maybe we'd mention there's been home break-ins all across many cities all around the metropolitan area. And I think your chief of police puts together some ideas that people should be considering. Well, I, <laughs> I uh, feel really... Uh, I mean, our home was broken into uh, 25 or 30 years ah. ago. And... Uh, um, uh, Rod, Rod Damer was the officer that uh -huh. responded when we called 911. And I had such a feeling of uh, violation oh, yeah. and anger. I channeled that towards starting a neighborhood watch group ah. on my block. And I, I went with Rod on a couple of ride-alongs. Sure. Uh, and I've done many ride-alongs. In fact, uh, Anybody can ride along with the police. You just oh, call and sure. make an That's arrangement. It's very interesting. Right. They, they love uh, having members of the uh, residents of the community ride along, see what they do. Right. Um, no, that's I've a had some ride people. alongs that have been real exciting, mm -hmm. and some that it's just you know another right. another night at the office. But um, it boggles my mind that people continue to leave their garage door. Uh, what they do is they park their car in the driveway with their garage door opener right. in there and the car is unlocked. Right. So the thief opens the car, opens the garage, and then, you know, they're yeah, in. They're into right. all the cars. They're into the house. Um, lock your stuff. I mean, I know we wish we didn't have to, right. maybe. Right, But we live in an urban area, and uh, uh, you need to keep your cars locked all mm -hmm. the time. You need to keep your homes yeah, you locked. Yeah, you do. And, uh, um, you know, even consider uh, there's uh, alarm systems now that can right. uh, alert you on your mm -hmm. cell phone from your home. And uh, 
Uh, you might be seeing an increase of these uh, doorbell right, cameras. With the cameras uh, right. I think the chief mentioned those as a right, possibility too. Right, I think so. Too. Right. So, uh, so, so it's common just sense stuff. An area for people to stop and think. Oh, I, absolutely. And because you don't know where they're going to hit. I, and I'm, they didn't hit Golden Valley first, but they have been hitting a few homes there. And it, the police are speculating this is a large group, maybe 30, 50 people. Yeah, but, uh, and I don't know. What did, you know, we keep hearing about the opioid crisis. Right. I don't know if the two things are related could or be. not, but it seems like yeah, that, they that could, could be. be possible. So. And I think the, uh, oh, to light up your exteriors was the other thing. Well, yeah, we had one light on when we were burglarized. Yeah. We were gone for the Christmas holiday. Right. And uh, the bulb burned out. Oh, <laughs> so, right, so you didn't have So, uh, yeah, so yeah. our house was in pitch darkness right. for who knows how right. many days, and I definitely made a change there. We have uh, lights on all around the house all night long. And then coming up is ni the, well, it's night to unite. So we'll just highlight that to people. That's going to be, on what day is that, will that be? That's going to be August 6th, okay. and um, I thoroughly enjoy that mm -hmm. evening. Uh, each year since I've been on the council, I'd, the police department offers council members right. a chance to ride along. And what I like about it is each year I have ridden with a different member oh, sure. of the Golden Valley Police Department. Yeah. And uh, it's just fascinating to meet them. These are great, great oh, people, yeah. great public servants. They're doing a great job. Um, I got to learn about the, the ambush resistant police uh -huh. cars that Golden Valley has now uh, after the incident in right. Minneapolis. Um, and I think, I think the Golden Valley police would, would back me up on this, that uh, uh, the city council is pretty good about providing the equipment they need to do a good job. Ah, that's good. And, uh, and the staffing, I think we have the sure. right staff. Things like these crimes you're talking about, they're, uh, it's not like scientific sometimes mm -hmm. it goes up sometimes right, it goes down right. that's true uh, but when crime goes down that's not the time you know to start cutting police officers <laughs> no. that means you're having good success yeah, it's working so, uh, oh and then i almost forgot neighborhood groups get some support from the city in this program so they should register by july 26th at that's city correct hall. yeah at city hall there's a packet you can download off right. the website um, the other thing uh, you know, I mentioned I started a neighborhood watch right. back at the time. There was, uh, over the years, there was turnover on my block and sure. a number of the original members left. Uh, and thankfully, the, the police department has taken a more of a leadership role. Mm -hmm. uh, the neighborhood watch meetings are actually held um, either at uh, City Hall or uh -huh. the police station or, or Brookview. They're kind of centralized. Oh. so. Um, it used to be kind of an uphill struggle to have right. those at residences, homes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a nice improvement. Oh, it really sure. it makes it easier to participate and it makes the participation uh, broader, right. uh, larger number of people. So. Well, I want to thank you so much. Well, thank for you, Juanita. I always, uh, your time and expertise with our audience with out there. We're glad that you've been with us and we hope you come back. Bye.